Sub Tank Nerds, Lottie here again. Today we are going to be covering the spark plugs on the Meteor engine. Over there. Uh, two reasons for that. One, I've been spending all day cleaning it. And two, I do not have the energy today to be climbing in and out of the tank. I've been chugging down water and my headache is just not going away. So, staying productive but doing more boring stuff uh but people like what i talk about so i haven't i don't know what i'm gonna call this video i'm probably gonna call it like anatomy of an aircraft spark plug because technically that is more correct than saying tank spark, spark plug and we'll get to that right now so i have been spending pretty much all day sifting through the box of spark plugs that we've got and trying to clean them up and make them work correctly still got a lot more to do uh, but it's been a lot of cleaning so you can see that's the uh, brake cleaner that i was using should be nice and clear but that is full of uh all the gunky yucky stuff um and then sandblasting using our groovy little sandblaster which cost all of 20 bucks actually really good if you do want to get a nice cheap uh, sandblaster highly recommend this one i'll have a look and see if people show enough interest i'll ask peter um where he got it but yeah it was basically an online purchase super easy just plug the airline in the back there um i do recommend buying a bit more um sandblasting grit just to put in it but i topped this up this morning and it's done something like 30 odd spark plugs which is quite good anyway um i put the bag over the top not to do it you need to keep this clear i just left a little hole in it but it does have the odd habit of expelling bits of grit out of this um little bag so i just put a plastic bag over the top so it was only coming out in one direction and not covering my hands in um uh, in sandblasting grit there we go oh i'm just all over the place today nice big headache anyway spark plugs you will see we have quite an assortment uh i've decided to clean up most of them because we well when we come time to test them there's a couple of different things that can and fail on these um, simplest is obviously the electrode um, but also the insulation material on the inside can also fail and the good thing about aircraft style spark plugs which are these ones uh, is that they are to a degree repairable or at least um you can take parts off one and put it on the other without too much hassle. This is the spark plug that you all know and love. You'll probably find this in your car if you're running a petrol car. It's pretty self-explanatory, boring sort of stuff. Uh, you have a ceramic outside. Your leads plug onto the end of the back there. Um, generally speaking pretty good there really isn't anything wrong with these and you've just got your electrodes up the top there and that gap is where you get the spark from pretty easy to install nothing too major with them um but they are wholly inadequate for aircraft usage which is what that engine is derivative of so uh, most tank engines actually of the era are aircraft derivative or straight up just pulled from an aircraft and slapped into the tank now why is that so we'll get rid of these ones i have taken the liberty of pulling one apart yes you can pull apart these spark plugs which is really cool so you have your outer jacket um the inside material let's see if i can line it up with you can see there's a change in surface in there that is an insulating material can be a number of different materials sometimes it's full ceramic like the electrode 
um, on this particular one and most of these, it is a layer of mica, which is a mineral silicate, blah, 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 sciencey rock stuff. Um, for our purposes, you can just see a flake of it right here. Uh, basically, there's just sheets of mica wrapped up in here to provide that little bit of insulating material. Um, yeah, look, it's it's it does the job, uh, but not a full 100% job. Uh, I've actually cleaned them all out, but you should also shove down some uh, dielectric grease, which is a special type of grease that um, is non-conductive uh, and is quite resistant to heat. So you pack that full of it, but you make sure that you keep your electrode nice and clean. So this needs to be clean. And the rest of this can be basically whatever. As long as it is not conductive, the inside that is, as long as it's non-conductive, uh, you're good to go. The outside is not important. As long as the threads are good, um, the case can look like anything. So the case on these ones, you'll see most of the cases on these, they've got a fair bit of surface rust on them. We will clean them up and paint them and they will look exactly like that. These came from the exact same batch. Here's a clean one and this is before. So they're quite easy to clean up. Uh, with the sand blaster and a bit of a wire wheel, but the outside is not important. The most important bit, debatably, is this. This is our main electrode. It basically consists uh, of your electrode, which is this metal bit, which goes all the way through and is welded on the end to here. So this bit where my pinky is has full conductivity with the tip there. Now on the outside, we have a ceramic case. If this fractures, chuck it away. You're done, you don't need it. Uh, you'll see this one is also stamped R, which means that there is actually a resistor through here. So it's not a full, um, if you hook up your multimeter from one end to the other, you'll not get a full uh, clean uh, conduct Oh, words, I'm just having a hell of a time of it today. There'll be resistance, a high level of resistance through here. And that ensures that when you run your magnetos, I did have one lying around here. When you run your magnetos through it, it will only um, get a spark if it's been correctly uh, energized. There we go, oh my God, words. Just got a massive headache today. Uh, you will also notice it has a copper o-ring as does the back of this as does the back of this these create a nice oil tight seal from there to there meaning in the slim chance that you get anything like water or oil leaking down the back here it will not come through and affect this end of the electrode were still get into the engine, remembering that these are plugged directly into the combustion chamber. So if anything can get in from this end to this end, it gets into the engine, specifically the combustion chamber. And we don't wanna do that, especially water. And because these normally operate in an aircraft, engine, you cannot have such silly little failures, which is why they are quote unquote over-engineered. They are perfectly acceptable. Uh, really good thing though, if this breaks, simply pull one out of another one, stick it in there, job done. Uh, in this case, got a bad one. How do I know it's bad? Because I wrote bad on it. Um, the electrode in here is actually quite good, but there is no mica on the outside of this, which means uh, any spark can and most likely will make its way to the outside case and you will not get a proper spark on the inside. So what I could do in this instance, uh, 
say this electrode is good and this case was, sorry, say this case was good and this electrode is bad, I can simply swap them out. So they are quite versatile in that regard. Um, but that is the primary reason why uh, aircraft use this style of spark plug. It's just a lot of redundancy safety features, um, basically just ensuring that you don't get stuff in the engine. Does this work? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but the standards for aircraft engines are significantly higher. So because we, well, we're not flying anywhere with that, <laughs> um, but we want to do it properly. And we've got these, so why not do it properly? Um, yeah, so there you have it. That is a quick little run through of the anatomy of our spark plug. I'm all over the place today, headache, I am filthy, tired. Um, I've actually bruised all up the wazoo, cut up, having too much fun with tanks and it's just really hot. Uh, we've got about a week more working on this engine before we go um, back up north and I go and visit my parents for the Christmas holidays. Uh, so yeah, you get a week more of me doing these videos and then I will be releasing all of the fun stuff that we've been doing with the tank. Uh, all the stuff that causes such bruises. Um, but yeah, I think I've done rambling enough. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of the good stuff that makes the YouTube algorithm like me. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow if I'm feeling better and not all over the place. So I will see you then. Bye.